And today we're gonna to be talking about the importance of mental health and mental health resources in Suffolk County. Alrighty, so these are the student, oh. <laughs> so these are the student presenters today and the students who worked on creating the slides. Um, next slide, please. Thank you. So by the end of this webinar, participants will be able to identify the prevalence of mental illness diagnosis in the United States, see how COVID-19 has affected mental health, be able to apply for low cost health insurance that includes mental health treatment for coverage, find patient assistant programs and other ways to obtain discounted medications and find support for mental health issues um, for themselves or a loved one um, in Suffolk County. And now I'm gonna pass it over to Christine. Yes, hi, my name is Christine. I'm a social work intern with Stony Brook University. Today, we're going to talk about what is mental health. Well, it is the well being of the mind. It is that vital part of humans which contributes positive effects to the physical, spiritual, and socioeconomic aspects of our lives. Mental health is primary in helping create good things in our life, and it is the vehicle that helps us work towards our hopes, dreams, and aspirations. Nevertheless, we cannot talk about mental health without considering mental illness. In the US alone, a reported one in five individuals will receive mental health diagnosis of some type in their life. Unfortunately, because of the shame or stigma that is often associated with mental health diagnosis, many people fail to seek help when they need it most. So we're gonna talk about the opioid use and mental health. The overall rate of prescription opioids has decreased from 81.3% in 2012 to 46.7% in 2019, in part by the creation of a prescriber registry to crack down on multiple opioids prescriptions for one person. However, there has been a 30% increase in overdoses across New York State and a 10% increase nationally during the last year that could be attributed to the COVID-19 pandemic. While overall overdose death didn't increase in Suffolk County, non-fatal overdoses have increased by 7.4%. Those are possible overdoses that were prevented using Narcan, which is a medication that reverses the overdose. Hi, this is Nia speaking. According to Spazek and Bosnick, um, the pandemic has exacerbated many social determinants of health, such as race, poverty, um, and previous mental health diagnosis, mainly because of an employment cause due to losing a job or the loss of health care, again, due to losing a job, as well as isolation. There's been an increase in anxiety, depression, and substance abuse caused by day-to-day -day stressors, which may hurt people in the long run because getting back to normal will take a longer time. Next slide. Those especially at risk for poor mental health are those I previously mentioned with pre-pandemic mental illnesses, healthcare workers, and essential workers. And their survey of um, 1,366 respondents. Most people were likely to seek help during the quarantine than afterwards, especially healthcare workers. What this means is that people were more likely to seek help during um, crisis, but not afterwards, even though it might be more helpful to continue on seeking help afterwards. Um, and this is troublesome because the pandemic is sure to have long lasting effects, not just in the moment, but afterwards, especially with jobs, um, healthcare and so forth. Next slide, please. Suffolk County has numerous resources to help deal with the pandemic and mental health through federal pandemic legislation, such as the CARES, CASH and ARPA Acts. Uh, last year, Suffolk received 257 million through CARES. For uh, 0.25 million was a, was given through the mental health and addiction programs through cash, and the recent bill ARPA gave 50 million for community programs and 160 million 
nationally to help fund community programs, clinics, and push for more mental health and public health workers. Next slide, please. Who's next? Hi, my name is Winnie and I'm a social work student. I'm gonna be talking about um, incorporating simple techniques um, that, that will help you bring improvement to your mental health. Of your mental health, health in the following ways. It lowers your blood pressure and reduces stress. Spending time walking or simply looking at trees lowers blood pressures and reduces the stress-related hormones, cortisol, and adrenaline. It improves mood. Researchers have found that nature simply makes us happy. Anxiety, depression, and anger are notably decreased after spending time outdoors. Improves focus. Study shows that adults and children who have difficulties focusing or controlling impulses are better able to concentrate after being in nature. The natural world allows our brains to take our break from all that mentally drains us and even reduces symptoms of attention deficit hyperactivity disorder. Avoid staying sedentary. While most people choose to exercise for weight loss or bodybuilding, you can experience the mental health benefits of exercising almost immediately. If you're feeling lonely, seek out an exercise partner or a virtual group such as exercise Zoom classes. Some free exercise apps that you can download on your phone are Yoga for Beginners, Simply Yoga, Daily Workouts Fitness Trainer, 7-Minute Workout, or Nike Training Club. Meditation. The benefits of meditation include gaining a new perspective on stressful situations, building skills to manage your stress, increasing self-awareness, focusing on the present, reducing negative emotions, increasing imagination and creativity, and increasing, increasing patience and tolerance. Some apps that will help you build um, guided meditation skills include Insight Timer, Calm, and Smiling Mind. So how to practice mindfulness. Mindfulness helps us put space between ourselves and our re reactions, breaking down our conditioned responses. Here's how to tune into mindfulness throughout the day. Set aside some time. You don't need any sort of special equipment to access your mindfulness skills, only time and space. Observe the presence. The goal is to pay attention to the present moment without judgment. Let your judgments roll by. When we notice judgments arise during our practice, we can make a mental note of them and let them pass. Return to observing the present moment as it is. Mindfulness is the practice of returning again and again to the present moment. Be kind to your wandering mind. Practice recognizing that when, you're, when your mind has wandered off and gently just bring it back. Improving your mood with yoga. Practicing yoga is a good way to incorporate mindfulness into your exercise routine for its physical and mental health benefits. Yoga can be beneficial in improving strength, balance, and flexibility, nighttime relaxation to help you sleep better, improving energy and brightening moods, managing stress, helping you connect with a supportive community, and promoting self-care. Practicing yoga can reduce the impact of the exaggerated stress responses and may be helpful in treating both anxiety and depression. So um, check the newsletter for your local library. There's libraries across Suffolk County that offer virtual exercise groups like chair yoga and Zumba and guided med meditation groups. Also the Long Island Health Collaborative website has incredible resources for getting and staying, health staying healthy. Find access to care for you and your loved ones at www.lihealthcollab.org slash healthy resources slash walking. So benefits of journaling. One way to deal with an overwhelming emotion is to find a healthy way to express yourself. This makes a journal a helpful tool in managing your mental health. Journaling can help you manage anxiety, reduce stress, and cope with depression. Journaling helps you control your symptoms and improve your mood by helping you prioritize problems, fears, and concerns, 
tracking any day to day symptoms um, so you can recognize triggers and learn to better control them, providing an opportunity for positive self talk and identifying negative thoughts and behaviors. Hi, I'm Nicole and I'm a library science student and I will read the next couple of slides for you. In 2019, Suffolk County Division of Community Mental Hygiene Services launched the DASH program, which is Diagnostic Assessment Stabilization Hub. The DASH program is intended to address emergent and crisis situations. However, the goal is to avoid crisis in addition to providing clinical care. This model of care is designed to be welcoming, low stimulation, and fun functions as a linkage center for people trying to negotiate the behavioral health system of care. The DASH program operates 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year, providing a wide range of mental health services for people and their families all over Suffolk County. You can access the program via the hotline at 631 952-3333 in person or a mobile response team can visit you in the community. You can find out more at fsl-li.org. And this is still operating um, during the pandemic too. Next slide, please. So uh, let's say you need affordable health care. Um, obtaining insurance can be difficult but this year, New York's open enrollment period has been extended through May 21st, and the federal law has made more tax credits available to people who purchase plans through the state marketplace, which you can visit at newyorkstateofhealth.newyork.gov or call the number 1-855-355-5777 uh, to find out more and get assistance, cho assistance choosing a plan. And in addition, there are four affordable health care plans for qualifying low-income New Yorkers. And these four plans are Child Health Plus, the Essential Plan, Medicaid, and Qualified Health Plan. And on the website, you can access all of the informational cards for each program. And it's on this table here, which you could access right on the website. Um, next slide, please. It shouldn't be difficult to obtain prescription medication for your mental health, but sometimes it is. One alternative is patient assistant programs, which are created by pharmaceutical companies to provide free or discounted medication to people who are unable to afford them. Each program has its own qualifying criteria set by the drug company. You can also contact the manufacturer directly for discounts and coupons on your prescription medications. And here are a few places to find lower prices for your prescriptions, whether or not you have insurance. So GoodRx is one, and the website lets you compare prices on medications and has coupons for discounts on medications. The Medicine Assistance, Assistance Tool is a search engine to find resources and cost-sharing programs for your medications. The National Alliance on Mental Health offers advice on talking to your doctor and links to patient assistant programs and prescription drug discount programs. It also has a list of pharmaceutical companies you can contact directly about discounts on their medications. And Needy Meds has a database of free and low cost clinic, state programs and patient assistant programs and offers help filling out applications and also offers a drug discount card. So here's some information for mental health and mental illness. You can go to the National Alliance on Mental Illness, NAMI, at uh, info at NAMI.org, the National Institute of Mental Health at nimh.nih.nih.gov, the Children's Mental Health at the cdc.gov slash children's mental health. Coping for with disaster, you can go to emergency.cdc.gov gov.coping. Uh, uh, the New York Office of Mental Health, the phone number is 800-957-8481. There's also a crisis text line. You text GOT5 to 741-741. Uh, the Suffolk County Community Mental Hygiene Service at 
1-800-273-8500. And also for the LGBTQ questioning um, youth is the Trevor Project and the website for that is below. Next slide, please. So what is emergency service? It provides rapid psychiatric and medical stabilization. They ensure the safety of persons who present a risk to themselves or to others. The program types range from crisis counseling and residential services to comprehensive psychiatric emergency programs, better known as C CPEP. Home-based crisis intervention services for children are designed to provide crisis services to families when a child is in imminent risk for psychiatric hospitalization. Next slide. Here are a list of some adult emergency services, the CPEP program at Stony Brook, there's the mobile crisis team at DASH Crisis Center, the response hotline, the suicide prevention hotline, the Talbot House, Domestic Violence and Sexual Assault Hotline in the Long Island Council on Alcoholism and Drug Dependence. Next slide. Here is a listing of uh, Children's Emergency Services just for Kids Diagnostics and Treatment Center in Middle Islands, 24-hour psychiatric emergency room at Stony Brook Psychiatric Associates and uh, Sagamore Children's Psychiatric Center in Dix Hills, which is an inpatient, outpatient, and the mobile health team. And those are for ages five to 17. Uh, that's seven days a week from 11 to 7 p.m. Next slide. So what is uh, inpatient and outpatient programs? Outpatient programs provide treatment and rehabilitation in settings such as clinics, partial hospital programs, and day treatments, while inpatient services provide stabilization and intense treatment, as well as rehabilitation with a 24-hour care in a controlled environment. Next slide. And here is a list of some inpatient programs um, at the hospitals, Long Island Community Hospital in Patchogue, Pilgrim Psych Center in Brentwood, Stony Brook Medicine in Stony Brook, Mathers Memorial in Port Jefferson, St. Catharines of Siena Hospital in Smithtown, and the VA in Northport. And here's a partial list of some outpatient programs. Brookhaven Mental Health Center has uh, Shirley Center in uh, Patchogue. The Family Service League has multiple in Bayshore, Center Mariches, Central, uh, Central Islip, East Yapank, and Huntington. Mary Haven is in Yatpank. Catholic Charities has Bayshore Center as well as Medford. The Hope House Ministries in Port Jefferson, New Horizons in Smithtown, and Well Life Network, which is in Coram and Smithtown. Crisis Care and Intervention, as we mentioned before, at DASH. It's a 24 hour hotline, 631 952 3333. The Adult Protective Services and the Child Protective Services, as long um, as well as the Long Island Crisis Center. Oh. Uh, right, this is me. Um, hi, my name is Mev. I am a library science student, and I'm going to talk a little bit about um, support groups that are available in Suffolk County. Um, you could start by uh, searching the Association of Mental Health and Wellness's database of support groups across Suffolk County for specific diagnoses, peer support, and many other issues. Uh, you can find groups for any age and for Spanish speakers. Um, just uh, start with uh, mhaw.org. Um, slash program slash community dash resource dash directory or you can call 631-471-7242 extension 2. Uh, Psychology Today lets you look for support groups by location, issues, therapy type, age, sexuality, and price. Um, so it's psychologytoday.com slash US slash group slash NY slash Suffolk dash county. Um, you can find a specialized mental fitness group 
through the Suffolk County Psychological Association and Stony Brook University. Um, these focus more on students and the topics include social anxiety and learning to focus with ADHD at suffolkpsych.org slash therapy-groups.asp or call 631-632-7830. Um, our local or state um, NAMI group uh, has a number of support groups. Uh, you can look on uh, namiNYS.org slash mental dash health dash programs. Uh, you can also call 518-248-7634 um, to learn how to join one of the local support groups during the pandemic. Um, the Long Island affiliate, NAMI Huntington, is currently holding virtual programs. Um, you can email nami.huntington at gmail.com for details. Um, <clears throat> Let's see. Uh, and then let's see, you can get group therapy, housing, addiction, pregnancy, and disability services in English and Spanish at Catholic Charities. That's catholiccharities.cc or call one of the clinics. Uh, Medford is 631-654-1919. Uh, and Bayshore is 631-665-6707. Uh, SIPA Mujer is a women's nonprofit organization that supports Hispanic women with resources for domestic abuse and therapy. Uh, you can call them at 631-980-2555 or visit us. Uh, S-E-P-A-M-U-A-J-E-R, sipamujer.org. Um, Adelante of Suffolk County offers medical and legal support for Hispanics. Uh, you can call 631-434-3481 or uh, go to adelantesc.us. And CareSEN offers legal and financial services as well as citizenship classes. Um, I imagine it would take a lot of anxiety off of somebody's mind if they had legal or financial services. Uh, contact the Hempstead office at 516-489-8330 or the Brentwood office at 631-273. Eight seven two one. Uh, their website is uh, care. Oh, it's CareSend. So C A R E C E N N Y dot org. Um. Yeah. Uh, uh, Nia, back to you. So again, that uh, was safe on my hair. This is just a translated um, thing about the resources, just in case anyone is looking at the um, slides and needs in Spanish. Next slide, please. Uh, as you mentioned with Catholic Charities, um, they had things, you know, specific like pregnancy, addiction, health with women care. Again, this is just in Spanish, um, but they offer a comprehensive amount of programs, many of them um, free or, um, with help with other assistant programs. Next slide. And this is just a continuation of different places, um, especially um, in Nancy County or any other places. Next slide, please. And this is uh, Project Warm to help with homelessness and so forth. Um, a line for veterans who speak Spanish or anyone who's in crisis who needs it in Spanish. Next slide. Um, this is also a link um, for SAMHSA um, and a link for mental health um, emergency calls, um, crisis calls in Spanish. Mm. 
and also the Healthy Libraries program as well. We have um, social work interns who work with us and we are also available for free one-on-one -on -one appointments to find health information or a referral to social service programs. So now I'm gonna open it to any questions anyone has and I'm just gonna go through the chat and see if there were any questions. So it looks like someone asked what to do when having heart palpitations due to anxiety and it comes and goes during the day. Um, I believe Christine put a link in the chat, but maybe Christine, if you wanna answer that question. Well, first I wanted to say, um, you know, rhetorical, you don't have to answer, but um, you should definitely talk to your healthcare provider about this. Um, but some other exercises that can be done are what's called grounding techniques. And like uh, Gabriella mentioned, I did put that in the chat, but uh, like a real quick scenario, it's called the five, four, three, two, one technique. Um, you can think about uh, five things that you can see, uh, four things that you can hear, three things that you can touch, two things that you can smell, one thing that you can taste. And this is supposed to you know, get you out of that you know, panic mode or, you know, calm yourself down by doing these grounding techniques. And that's just one of many uh, different ones that they have. Yeah, and also I'm gonna put a link in the chat from Harvard um, that just has some sort of health, self-help tips on how to stop heart palpitations you know, maybe not smoking, cutting back on alcohol, uh, make sure you eat regularly and drink plenty of fluids and get enough sleep. And of course, you want to call your doctor if you have palpitations with shortness of breath, dizziness, chest pain, fainting. Um, those could be signs of having a serious heart problem. So we would definitely recommend contacting um, a primary care physician or going and seeing someone. Are there any other questions? And just so everyone knows, all of the, the webinar is recorded and all of the slides will and the recording will be posted to our YouTube page and our Facebook page later on. And if you have any questions for us, you can always contact us um at our email there should be a slide somewhere um facebook there we go perfect our email you can always call us or give us send us an email um healthy underscore libraries underscore program at stonybrookmedicine.edu um if you want any health information or referral to social services Any other questions? <clears throat> if there aren't any questions, I just wanna say that it's, um, if we haven't highlighted it enough in this presentation, um, getting help in whatever form like is best for you, makes the most sense for you, is really, really important. Um, you know, like we said, um, you know, the people having issues with mental health, um, there are significantly more of them since the pandemic started. And I know that um, my own mental health suffered quite a bit and is still suffering quite a bit. And um, if I weren't getting the help that I needed, I don't know that I would be even able to, you know, do things like help create these, this, uh, the slide deck. So um, I really, really encourage you like it. It's stigma can be a big problem, but you are more important than what anyone thinks about mental health or your mental health. It's really important to take care of yourself. So I, I hope that we've been able to offer you at least some resources to um, to do that, whatever it looks like for you. 
Well, thank you everyone for attending this webinar and thank you to the students for putting this presentation together. Um, and thank you to the public libraries for hosting us. Again, if you, you know, I know that there's a lot of resources within this slide deck and that might be a little bit overwhelming because there are so many resources, but maybe if you wanna talk with a social work intern about, um, service programs that might be helpful for you, you can always contact us or email us and we can set up that free one-on-one -on -one appointment with you and refer you to any programs that may you know, benefit you. Or if you just want someone to talk to, you can always contact us. So thank you so much. And if you wanna view the slide deck later, it should be posted to our Facebook and YouTube page in a couple of days. All right, thank you everyone.